for you is one of the leading digital content aggregator especially ebooks of various publishers around the world elib for you platform is already live in various iits nits engineering colleges and various esteemed universities across the country elib for you provides access through various evolving models like pick and choose and subject packages for yearly or perpetual subscription elib for you app is popular among students and academicians for e textbooks which can be used even in remote areas you're most welcome to have a glimpse of our platform taking the vision of digital india forward and reaching out to the gen y we strongly recommend our services New Age International Publishers established in 1966 is the market leader for school and university level textbooks. New Age has published more than 4000 books in various subjects including science, engineering, management, agriculture. The books published by New Age are authored by eminent academicians of national and international repute and famous worldwide universities new age has its headquarters in new delhi and branches in london and 10 metro cities across india new age is one of the evolving edtech companies which provides digital content through various platforms like elib for you new age vision is to publish globally best quality content greetings of the day to everyone it is my distinct pleasure to welcome each and every one of you to this significant and momentous international webinar today marks a special occasion as we gather from different corners of the globe to engage in thoughtful and share insights in artificial intelligence role in modern day libraries my friends i am glad to inform you that currently we have more than 250 participants who have joined us in this webinar from across the world especially from india kenya egypt nigeria sri lanka and many countries from middle east i would like to extend my heartful gratitude to our esteemed speakers who are experts in their respective fields for gracing us with their presence and for contributing their valuable knowledge your expertise will enrich our discussions and we eager to learn from your experiences well artificial intelligence adoption is evolving from personal to specialized and custom ai application using close models and apis Recently Google launched AI module Gemini which is most flexible large language model Gemini can comprehend text audio images video and computer code simultaneously it might outperform chat gpt in the near future New Age is also launching ebook collections next year with special AI features like adaptive learning text summarization chat gpt and other evolving ai modules webinars serve as powerful platforms for collaboration and knowledge exchange and this event is no exception i personally encourage all participants to actively engage in the discussions ask questions and share your perspectives the success of this webinar lies not only in the expertise of our speakers but also in the collective intelligence and curiosity of our diverse audience my friends let me introduce you all to dr p k bhattacharya ji who will be the keynote speaker today he will join us very shortly 
He will also be the moderator for this webinar, for which I am very thankful from bottom of my heart. Sir, Dr. Bhattacharya is Senior Fellow, Associate Director and Head at Knowledge Management Division at TERI, TERI, which is the Energy and Research Resource Institute based in New Delhi, India. He supervises and manages knowledge procurement, management and user-centric services at TERI. Sir has years of expertise in conceptualizing and developing electronic value-based knowledge services. Sir has been engaged as knowledge support in several sponsored projects from the Indian government with ministries like Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Forest and Climate Change, Department of Science and Technology. He has also been join, joining and doing work with international organizations like IMF, World Bank, International Transport Forum, and Asian Development Bank. Besides his many feats, he is also associated with IGNU for planning and development of course modules. Now, I personally request Dr. Bhattacharya sir to please start proceedings of the webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shomaji. It's my privilege to be part of this webinar. Hope I am audible to all. Yes, sir, you are. Okay. So, so this is basically uh, you know interesting topic. And when uh, Somyaji and his colleague uh, approached me, I couldn't say no because this is such a important and evolving area which we all should know and uh, understand value attached to it in future days to come in the library profession. Now, if you see that as we navigate through this information age. AI over the period has emerged as a very, very powerful tool. It is actually redefining how what should be done in every field, including libraries. And in libraries, when we see that what we want to know, so, you know, AI can help in your library field many ways. So you cannot say this is going to be a keynote address, rather I'll share you know, some of the issues which I'm sure my, you know, uh, fellow colleagues in the panel will be discussing in detail. And of course, uh, we can also discuss in detail. So what I was telling that AI use in libraries can be in every field almost. For example, any repetitive task what you are doing, including circulation, including book processing and all those things, it minimizes error and data inconsistency. Because when a human eye sees data, it might mistake, but a machine cannot. So from that perspective, it minimizes your errors. Support to provide you know, various types of information services, which otherwise is not possible uh, with, with the present you know, infrastructure provided to library. It can tailor recommendation for your patrons, like you know, the what kind of budgeting should be there, what kind of information usage are there, what are the behavioral analysis by seeing the CCTV and all. So all these things are possible. User side, if you see user interaction can be can be actually enhanced multifold. And believe me, in today's world user experience is the one most important thing. So user not only need the information access from different sources, so that actually could be knowledge discovery, which AI can very well do. However, user can act, you can actually interact with users in many other ways, you, through your websites, through providing, you know, chat, uh, bot kind of, you know, reply to users, so all these possibilities are there. Like, you know, when you create the content, so, you know, for content creation, you can take help of various AI tools like, you know, Google Bard, like, uh, you know, ChatGPT, Bing, many other, you know, forums and many other AI tools will come in near future, I'm sure. Now, it can actually, of course, there is an issue that you can actually infringe copyright in the process. So pro 
copyright and intellectual property, if you can protect in a proper way, if you want to protect, so AI can actually provide you a handful of opportunities there as well. Long-term access and preservation is one of the issues where AI can actually help. Data protection and security. So that is another area where AI tools are, uh, you know, giving a lot of, you know, inputs these days in library profession. Now, some examples, if you see that, you know, availability of resources that you can actually, you know, uh, get hold of um, what exactly there in the, in your library bookshelf from, you know, um, through your library website. Of course, we can do this as well, but with a precise, precise way we can do through AI. Alert you can set whenever there is a book, so automatically an alert will come to you. So no human intervention is necessary. Point a user to relevant library resources or even suggest what are the different other types of resources he should go through. So, you know, and you can use your CCTV footage to find out even without asking your user where exactly he is spending more time or she is spending more time and find out what kind of books or what kind of you know resources are most used in library so that you can channelize your library budget in those areas as well. So basically, you know, even simply in information request. So that is very much you know, uh, time consuming these days. So AI could actually support you there. So it's, there is a, always a uh, concern that, you know, AI might, you know, make a lot of job replacement, but job displacement, I'm definitely sure it's not going to be because when computer was coming, we all were thinking that job, there will be you know huge loss of job that is not happening actually rather more people are coming in library similarly if you have to use ai in a different perspective not only content creation because content creation might lead to you know copyright violation unless you actually go through it manually and correct it accordingly using the paraphrasing and other you know plagiarism prevention software and all Necessity for library professionals to need to know how AI tools should be used. I am not asking you that you know you have to develop AI tools, but it is important to use AI, AI tools in your library. But for that, you need to have you know some skill set available, and of course, your organization wherever you are need to invest some finance in the initial days so that you can adapt to those technologies. But it's not necessarily that, you know, uh, this is going to be the huge amount you have to spend. Now, I'll stop here. And because we have a very huge, you know, uh, um, you know, panels here and they are quite, you know, knowledgeable. And each of this field will be, you know, uh, covered in a, in a, in a, in detail. I believe that what I have just, you know, give you a brief understanding. So, um, without further delay, let us start the proceeding. Now, first of all, let us, you know, set the rule of the game that we won't spend more time as on debt. Means the time allocated to each panelist are, is 15 minutes. So we'll stick to our presentation or discussion deliberation in that time. After that, we will have a question answer sessions. And I want at least all questions, all important questions which our speakers will have or rather our participants will have. So that definitely we can, you know, discuss at length. So considering that I request again, all panelists stick to your deadline of timing that is 15 minutes. Okay, so our first speaker is, uh, uh, first speaker is Professor Dr. Nimai Chand Shaha. Dr. Shaha is very known and he is uh, a group, good friend of mine. Yeah. So he is currently serving as a librarian in Vishwavarati. Vishwavarati is a central university in India. He has organized over 35 events at 
Vishwavarati and participated in more than 200 seminars and conferences in various capacities and having around 90 publications to his credit. He is also the recipient of four different awards. His areas of interest is library automation, ICT application, HR management, in library, library service marketing, and research ethics. But you know, let me tell you the what I I have just gone through or read whatever was given to me, but I am sure Dr. Shah will appreciate that I could not, you know, probably you know, given at least half of the amount of experience what he has already carrying with him. So over to you, Dr. Shah, for you know enlightening the speak, um, uh, participants. You have around 400 participants. Okay, so good afternoon. Here it is Dr. Saha from Vishwabharati Library. And at the, at the very outset, let me extend my deep regards in favor of Dr. P.K. Bhattacharya, sir, who is supposed to be the moderator and one of the mentor of Indian allies, Arena. And we are seeking uh, our different suggestions through different discussion forum and this kind of platform from Dr. Bhattacharya for going forward in our future course of library service world or journey, whatever I can say. And if I am not paying my deep regards to ELIP for you, as well as New Age International Publishers family members, all the family members of both the, uh, I can say platform or industry or publishers, whatever it is, I don't want to mention any name because if I miss any name, then I could have some wrong from my side. So by taking this challenge to organize role of AI in modern day libraries by any publisher, be it online, be it, uh, you know, print industries, they have just carried out their added role in the academic arena. Usually what we know, we know that our uh, publishers will only feed us by their print or electronic document. But gradually, soon after the invent of this kind of you know, technology, we found that, that our publishers, you know, this is actually a, again, family or contributory game to the knowledge society that whatever produced by the contributors that has been catered by the publishers or vendors, and we the librarian, more, near to the users to cater that kind of ready-made food on the requirement of the users in the traditional or in the electronic environment. Now, gradually on the way of our journey, we found that if I take the example of early life of our moderator set, I am sure that when he has studied his library information science, this kind of even library management software or Google, or this kind of, you know, digital library software, digital preservation, digital rights management, and many things. And at the last, what we are discussing today is AI or ML. It's completely a dreaming project during 1970s or 1980s like that. But by virtue of passage of time and technological advancement, we have no way but to handle this kind of gadgets to survive the library profession in general and to survive the library and information society as well as our academic society and society in general to a little extent. Now, let me just customize, let me allow to share my screen. Uh, I have a few slides because I need to customize myself uh, within the given time by 14 minutes, not by 15 minutes. So that I will just going to say something. Uh, I hope my screen is visible and uh, my audio is also reachable to all of the participants and yes, panelists. You are. Yes, you are. Now, you see, I am just going to customize my submission on library and AI or ML implications and complications. See, whenever any term come into the knowledge society, it has two sides like a coin, good and bad, head and tail. In, in, in my class 10, 12 students, I used to face a question whether cinema or television is blessings or scars in the human life. 
then this time students are facing that whether mobile is blaze or curse in the human life or society and this internet this worldwide web then online gaming and finally this ai true whenever we are going to accept something as good we need to be make ready ourselves to accept the threats of the same thing therefore to me this technology google www internet ai all are just like a fast food to me and a librarian or teacher they are supposed to be the supplier or provider of parental food which is infection free preservative free and which is also economy in terms of time and economy in terms of price and economy in terms of quality and economy in terms of quantity let's say if we give any search term in google that artificial intelligence and library then google will probably send me back more than 50 crore hits so being a human mind considering the time paucity it is next to impossible to judge whether and where out of these 50 crore docs is my needful or authentic information laying over it's very difficult and usually throughout our library service life we found that scholars students even most of the times faculty members they are going through the google search not the discovery search though we have procured for them by paying some money to any vendor as a result of that like a indigestion by taking this kind of junk food they are suffering from sparing time and they are just suffering from find out the authentic academic literature they are augmented for and whatever junk literature supplied by the google so the issue of reconciliation now here the role of the librarian is evolved centralized or explicable that yes your librarian is there to provide you within a minimum time and a very ready made area therefore let's take the example of any medicine shop if i compare the medicine shop like a google information shop what we found that every medicine shop every citizens are welcome to visit and i can take a paracetamol i can take an antacid i can take antibiotic anything what happened after two weeks or after six when we used to visit the doctors doctors first question is that for that have you take any medicine by your own for this if your answer is yes then the repercussion of the doctor is different if your answer is no then perhaps his treatment modalities will be easier means self treatments many a times appear before us like a dangerous because if it would have been right then there was no need of doctors in the society if it would have been then there was no need of legal practitioner for any legal complication or implication to take a suggestion if there was no need of filtration of information it's fake and authenticity there was no need of news industry or media industry or media ethics likewise librarian is here to judge like a guardian to judge like a parents what is the right information and what is the inauthentic or not authentic information and ai we have to use this ai as a back end tool to justify to qualify whether my english write up is as well whether my english write up is running through good like if i talking about grammarly quillwort trinka these are the english language oriented write up pronounce uh, you know preposition using grammar using capitalizing 
this kind of tools, including some sort of similarity checking features they have. So we need to know. Then the moment I using education copilot AI, scholarship, size space, and many more to get a paraphrase, to get a translation from one language to another, then my fervent appeal to all of us, including myself, that blindly we will not accept the output given by the AI. Instead of that, my suggestion, and that is my regular practice, that whatever given by the AI as output, I need to go through that AI product or output, then I need to file the output along with my intelligent output, along with my experience output, and then I will get a qualitative third part of output. So what I am just going to explore is that, that we will use artificial intelligence, machine language as a backend or a kind of academic or research and developmental tools, not that a replacement of human being. Because like that taking medicine from the shop directly without consulting doctors, that may give us indigestion. And many a times we found that the, that the output given by the AI, they are not knowing the content spirit, what actually capital share of the human mind. Same thing, if I say the hunter killed the tiger and tiger killed the hunter, same sentence, there is no prepositional difference. Tiger killed the hunter and hunter killed the tiger. To AI, the basic keywords and key features are same. But to a human mind, this will completely distinct based on my needs, based on my objective, based on my times, based on my existence. So this is, in short, my, my, my uh, exposure on AI and ML in the current society. And of course, there are many things, advantage in favor of AI using. At the same time, there are many things, disadvantage of using AI in our day-to-day -day life. But being a human intelligent citizen of the society, if we handle the, the AI for our constructive journey, then I think next slide. Then I think we will be gaining something from the advent of the technological atmosphere of the society as our tools and techniques, gearing tools and techniques, not blindly 100% rely the AI and not just try to copy and paste from the AI to my text so that it will be nowadays many good similarity detection software in general and plagiarism checking in particular. And you know, and all will be agreed with me that none of the similarity detec detection software is able to identify the whether it is actual plagiarism or not. To convert a similarity into a plagiarism, we need to have subject experts human intervention. Then only we will say, yes, whatever given by the drill bit, authenticate, turn it in, you know, Urkund or original, there are many more software. So we need to compile that things by our expertise as human being. So basically my presentation will have five different facets, introduction, library, librarians, and HR in the current society, then AI oblique ML and conclusion. Since it's a 14, 15 minutes game, I don't want to elaborate all these facets one by one by one, and most of the things, or I can say that the, the assimilation or a summation of my presentation, I have already spelled out. Now let me go slide by slide to highlight main features of my presentation. You see, enhancing teaching and learning by using AI. Everybody, we are knowing, and this is available in the web world. So I don't want to listen line by line, but 
I don't want to highlight that AI has become increasingly popular in recent years, and it's now being used in a variety of fields, including teaching and research, and uh, you know many more industry. But my only signaling message is that we need to use these things as our backend tools. No frontend replacement of human being. Next, you see how can I improve my teaching learning by using this AI? There are many points. If required, I will share these uh, things, and this is available in the in the, in the uh, you know internet or uh, www. So it's available, and you can uh, surface or retrieve by using Google or any search engine like that. So next, now advantage it helps to save a lot of time and effort, which are mechanical and repetitive. Unifies the evaluation and assessment processes, makes the entire teaching process very organized and hence more effective and qualitative too. Provides more room for practicing core academic activities. Example, developing a new research idea and organizing academic events like conferences. Of course, these are the added advantages of that. Let me pass it out. Now, these are the list of AI available in the academic arena. Total 22 uh, to, uh, you know, list of AI I have been given along with that ARL which is, should be a ready-made uh, single slide from where one can get the click, mouse click availability of the link of different, uh, you know, uh, open source. Of course, these all are open source, but to a little extent, or if you're going to broad extent, then you need to procure and you need to pay money for the use of the by and large of the all features of all these things. I mean, uh, I mean, all this AI, but primarily to expedite, to hold the experience, these all are primarily open to register by anybody else. Like uh, I am using uh, almost uh, this 22 uh, AI uh, for our regular service. When I found that it is one month over, they are asking money. Then I switch over to another similar kind of uh, AI to, 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 to rejuvenate my users and to gather experience for my own. Next. Then these are the specially audio video based AI. I mean, from audio to text and text to audio, these are the 12 different uh, you know, um, AI tools who have different uh, features for convert text to video and video to text. Now, next, all apps are not of similar uh, kinds. They have their own features. Someone is giving this uh, one thing is good. Someone is giving another thing is good. Someone is very efficient in PPT generation. Someone is MCQ generation. Someone is a lesson plan generation. Someone is some other features. And so a huge competitive quiz competition, evaluation and everything. Next. I think I am about to reach my uh, boundary of time. So let me just finish uh, another uh, two and a half minutes like that. So now uh, you see, these are the limitations of the AI, as I said during my intro speak. So these are the eight different limitations. In spite of having limitation, we have to use the AI for the regular uh, activities in academic and research. Next. You see, this is the, the, the home page of the education copilot. Here we are having 12 different features. So recipe builder to, to quiz building, and there are many things, project uh, connector, and there are many things. Next, this is another size space. By applying these things, we can prepare our paraphrasing. And also this software is also able to detect and detect, detect of a, another AI, whether we are using or not. So then another one is next. And this is slide GPT by using the slide GPT we will be able to prepare the, uh, the, the PowerPoint presentation within a second by giving any particular topic. Then lessonplans.ai, before to uh, deliver any lecture inside the classroom, we can have a put up a particular topic and this will give one page, two page, sum up of the lesson to, 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 to cater as lesson plan. So by these teachers can get, uh, cater their, their, their education more faster, more qualitative uh, and in shorter time. Then, then this is a question, well, uh, for after, comparing, after completing a topic, we can able to, to prepare the question by using this question well apps. Next. This is a chat with any PDF. After uploading one, two, three different PDF file here, here we can make a chat of, with that particular PDF, which is also help you to figuring, to capsule, encapsulate the uh, literature review of any academic writer. Next, this is the Visorthi Library Network homepage. Here also we are using our uh, chat GPT. And if you put up any question in the right-hand panel, we are trying to show that if you ask any question, 
why I need to visit Vishwadi library? What are the key features of Vishwadi library? Many times I found that the answer of the AI, whatever given, that is far better than what I will be giving. So in many cases, it is also true. The answer and the service given by the AI, in many cases, found that it is uh, more than good enough than human being is capable. Next. Uh, and this is the library and librarian, what they can do. So at the last point, let me read that librarian, just like a counselor, doctor, legal advisor, sales experts, finally, librarians are just like a mother food supplier, while AI ML technology will supply fast food. So we have to be uh, very confined that nobody need to be worried and count down the days, whether in the near future will be library or librarian. This is late 90s, we are listening to this slogan, but librarian was there, librarian is there, and librarian will be there in the near future. Next. So in short, the basic take home of this 14 minutes is that information literacy on AI as tools and techniques, basic knowledge to access library and librarian, way to steer safe academic journey in the AI oblique ML era. So uh, next slide. Dr. Fortacharya said, let me hand over the session to you with this very brief presentation from my side, and I'll be happy if I'm receiving any question to clarify myself more and more. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you very much all the participants and team New Age International and Elite for you for giving me a chance to share my experience. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shah, for this you know, presentation. In fact, what you can uh, you know, uh, understand from this presentation, what Dr. Shah told you, there are so many AI tools are available for different purpose. However, use judiciously. We have a brain on our shoulder, means we have a head on our shoulder, use it. Don't think that, you know, those days are gone that when we will be using our, you know, head. So let's, you know, try to use them and let's try to use it judiciously. Try to take help from these AI tools as many, as much as you can, but do not ever consider that you are getting replaced by AI. Right. Because we have not reached up to this stage. Just right. to give you an idea that Chat GPT took $2 billion, more than $2 billion investment and nearly 20 years of research. So they came up to this stage. Now, another maybe 15 to 20 years of research minimum is required to you know, decipher those two things, the hunter killed tiger and tiger killed hunter. So just to, you know, uh, think positively that you are there for, you know, support. Now let's come back to the uh, uh, second uh, presenter of this, uh, because we have been informed that, you know, uh, Dr. Said will be joining little late. So we'll straightway go to another stalwart in the field, Jagdish Kulkarniji who is director and librarian in Swami Ramanand Tirth Marathawada University, Nanded. And he is life member of various professional bodies, read, wrote 16 books, 50 research paper, many popular articles, edited two special issues of periodical, written preface of books. Sir, over to you, Dr. Kulkarni, and we will be you know, hearing from you in next 15 minutes the value of AI in modern days libraries. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bhattacharya, sir, for your good words about me. Uh, let me share my screen. Good afternoon to all. Today we are gathered virtually for a webinar on a very innocent topic that is on AI, that is artificial intelligence. I must congratulate New Age International Private Limited Publishers who have organized this webinar. Uh, this international conference is really helpful to all, even I can say myself also. I was knowing little about, about the in artificial intelligence, but as I get chance, to speak here, I have to go through many material, many documents, and I read a little bit more. I have listened uh, many YouTube lectures, 
and i see there are a lot of things in artificial intelligence uh, it is uh, respected mr somaya gupta sir uh, dr pk bhattacharya sir saha sir and all other uh, panelist it is my proud pleasure to put my views on this topic uh, the topic of my discussion is application of artificial intelligence in transforming knowledge resources centers the outcome of my topic outcome of this presentation will be uh, like this so concept of artificial intelligence that part has been covered uh, somewhat the need and importance of ai in libraries then role of ai in knowledge resource centers the benefits uh, and then challenges challenges and concern here i have given one quote by stephen hawking which is again is a different as uh, dr bhattacharya sir rightly said uh, it is not going to replace anyone but still what stephen hawking said that development of full artificial intelligence could spell at the end of the human race so this was uh, it was this his opinion then as you say see there are some points i will not go in detail to this point because i have to speak uh, on specifically about the application of ai in knowledge resource centers that is in the library but few concepts like uh, what is transformation and what is knowledge resource center i will just quote about knowledge resource center knowledge resource center uh, means a place where knowledge gets originated and in maharashtra specifically the maharashtra public university act 2016 uh mentioned knowledge resource center as a you know uh, replaced the name of university library uh, as a knowledge resource center uh, it is to highlight the importance of library in knowledge creation so uh, the libraries are not just for the knowledge disseminator but they are knowledge creators what it want to say then as the there are different types of ais like a machine learning deep learning natural language processing computer vision these are the some top types of uh, artificial intelligence then what are the present day applications there are different present day applications you can see around us like a self driving cars are there uh, specifically in usa then physical facial recognition is nowadays a common in every place then natural language processing it is there then machine learning is there so these are the uh, different present day applications are there indian government is also committed to promoting the development and adoption of ai in india so uh, in india is also a leading country in the world in ai and research development so the indian government is trying to add many things in the artificial intelligence like companies like tcs hcl wipro uh, as were are working hard uh, for enhancing this artificial intelligence even government of india has a uh, different strategies that national artificial intelligence strategy the niti ayog then atal tinkering labs so these are the few uh, things which are government of india is doing for the betterment of the society uh, by introducing artificial intelligence uh in india after 1990 uh that ai has been uh, come up and uh, it has grown up like in 2000 2018 2020 and 2021 so still there are so many areas of research in the artificial intelligence like machine learning is there then computer vision there robotics is there and artificial intelligence can be used as in healthcare in agriculture in education as uh, sir saha sir rightly said that it can be used in learning and teaching then it can be used in finance it can be used in smart cities though it is used widely there is a need to think on many parts of the ethical things so ethical ethics in ai should be considered 
then I will just quote few examples. Two days before I was in Delhi, I went to my friend. There I saw a machine called Alexa. So that friend was instructing him for singing a song, for playing song, for increasing or decreasing or muting volumes. So he was asking to stop any song. And all his instructions were followed by that Alexa. So it is one kind of, again, uh, artificial intelligence nowadays we are using. Even in common days, in, uh, while using mobiles, while using emails, there are different kinds of artificial intelligence we are using. Like uh, when you type any word, that time your mobile gives you different words with correct spellings. So if you even if you have a wrong spelling, it will correct either automatically or it will suggest. So this kind of artificial intelligence you can see wherever you are searching on the Google. If you see search anything on the Google, it will give different information on that topic. Even if you see any video on the YouTube, it will give similar similar topic of the YouTube's. Okay. So then again, you can see that there are auto reply in even WhatsApp as well as in emails. Once you send email, you will get auto reply. So that is uh, there. Then uh, now there are softwares, even in library, you can get automatic reminders, automatic uh, messages of issue or return of the books. Okay. And then there are such many things. Uh, nowadays, even for picking a particular book from stack and bringing it to the circulation desk, there are some robots. Uh, we are using RFID-like technology. And most important tool, what we are using is a Google map. So once you are in the your vehicle, you will find out what is the distance of your destination. It also calculates your timing. It calculates time required, traffic conditions, and so many things. So this is, again, a very important thing in present day situation. Then there are different AI tools. Dr. Saha sir uh, told so many tells. I will just tell you only two important uh, AI tools. One is a chat GPT, and another one is a BARD. That is Google Bard. So Chat GTG, you know, it is a generative pre-trained transformer, and uh, it is widely used nowadays. Each and every student and every uh, literate literate person is using for so many things. They are finding answers for their questions. Even students are writing their answer from Chat GPT. So Chat GPT is a now a popular brand in artificial intelligence. But when I was searching this alternative, I got this BARD, and BARD is also very important, very nice, I can say. Uh, even uh, what I found, there might be a difference of opinion, but what I found that BARD is better than the chat GPT, because chat GPT has some limitations. Uh, so Google BARD is also AI-powered chatbot that stimulates, uh, uh, it uses natural language processing. BARD originally used, so Lambda is there. Uh, Lambda for dialogue application, but upgraded its Google's next generation's language model, Palm 2. So uh, in last paragraph, I have given its difference. So BARD, BARD can draw its responses from the internet in real time, while chat GPT-4 relies on the data set that only goes up to up until late 2021. I asked the same question to bar as well as chat gpt but chat gpt has limitations that it will not give data after 2021 or 2022 so it is uh, like uh, old data uh, chat gpt has but bar is giving up to date information so that is the uh, additional thing or positive thing about the bar then why do we need this ai and what is the importance of this AI in libraries. So there are so many things. 
now we want to move now we are moving libraries are moving from printed document to digital information from particular location to the virtual availability then persons to intelligent machine card catalog to web opac bibliographic information to full text information reference desk to virtual desk specific timings to 24 by 7 automation to digitization manual classification to automatic classification available information to generation of information offline meetings to online meetings knowing information requirement based on google search checking memory and checking skills these are the things uh, that because of that we need and uh, there are many so many points that uh, there are changing Jagdish, needs have, in... dr jagdish you have 5 minutes to conclude okay okay sir okay i will conclude in time so there is a need of there is increasing volume of data there is changing needs of users need to reduce cost so these are the reasons uh, that the we need this okay so what are the areas i have distributed this areas into management acquisition processing services collaboration extension activities and modernizations in this area uh, we can work ai can work so in management specifically we can have this writing letters writing minutes having draft of for mu mou if you want to write a mou then uh, this ai tool can give you mou also a draft of the mou and so many things even translation uh, and such activities can be done even there is no need of typing nowadays so there are uh, different tools that whatever you are speaking that can be just typed on uh, with the help of that tool then in acquisition there are again acquisition you can use ai tools uh, for identifying relevant resources so what what are the demands of the users even you can find out if there is a uh, as they are searching users are searching on the google there are so many companies when we search something on the google they find out what are the, our requirements like that libraries are, are, can also check their required area so it will help for the collection development also uh, it can help in the preservation like a uh, security uh, security area and uh, sensors and cameras are helpful for the security also in processing area you can use uh, for cataloging classification metadata generation improving resource organization and discoverability so these are the areas where ai can be used then there are different services like a chatbot is a very important service i can say uh, as dr saha has uh, mentioned that his website has that chatbot so chatbot with the help of chatbot you can answer all all the queries so every library can adopt that chatbot also then you can have virtual reference librarian uh, you can give a uh, reference service information service then uh, you can provide intelligent assistance to the users with the help of this uh, ai tools then in the area of collaboration you can have a different collaboration with the help of ai so it is also uh, ai can be helpful in collaboration and the modernization is uh, very important because ai is the tool for the modernization of the libraries uh, so it can be used for metadata uh, generation then uh, you can automate many tasks like data entry uh, that may be useful for uh, freeing up staff uh, time of the staff so you, it is helpful in the knowledge management and sharing also so these are the areas so we can discuss it in detail but i just narrated all these areas where artificial intelligence can be applied so these are the case studies uh, even i have got that, in, that information from bard i have asked a question that how uh, what are which are the libraries worldwide uh, which are using ai tools so uh, i would like to highlight only which part uh, on which area they are working like they are working library of congress is working on classification 
enhancing searchability of digital collection, improving accuracy of optical character recognition. Uh, like that, next library is the Stanford University Libraries, which is uh, work, uh, which is taking help of AI tools on ma uh, manuscript digitization, collection analysis, and personalize the information retrieval, and so on. So there are different libraries uh, which are using uh, this AI tools uh, for different purposes. So collection management is there, reservation is there, information retrieval is there, digital preservation is there. These are the areas uh, where AI can be applied. So why I'm taking this case studies? Based on that, we our libraries can be uh, apply this uh, different AI tools in our libraries. So so these are the areas. Automatic translation of historical documents uh, is used by Qatar National Library. So these are the areas where we can. Then I have find find out some uh, libraries where they are using robot. So robot is also used for different purposes uh, like uh, greeting visitors, providing directions, assisting the basic inquiries, autonomous tasks, shelving books, and so many things. Uh, while searching different libraries, I found Singapore National Library is uh, a library where uh, uh, that they are using a book board. So it is again, uh, it I will just give. So this is uh, a tool like a robot which is scanning the books so uh, that tool can pick out any book. I think it is like a robot. And you can see on the screen that library is using this gadgets for searching and picking up the book. And it can pick a book and it gives it to the circulation section for the issue. So this is uh, one tool. Then second tool they are using, second gadget or, uh, they are using, it is auto sorter. So star doesn't have to sort the books. Once the books are returned or new books are, have come into the library, they just have to keep uh, on the desk and that machine automatically uh, sorted these books and they uh, particular that, that is filled in the particular tray. So this is again a very good thing I have, I have observed in that library. So this kind of uh, automatic things can be introduced in even in our libraries also. So, okay. So, so Indian in, in Indian libraries again. I have taken this information from Bard. Uh, I don't say I, I don't uh, say exactly that it is uh, whether it is correct or, or authentic. But I have got from this uh, this information from Bard. So, National Digital Library of India is using AI for classification tagging. Uh, then multi multilingual search and translation, optical character recognition. So these are the areas where uh, AI is used by the National Digital Library, that is NDLI. Then Indian Institute of Technology also, uh, IIT Delhi is also using uh, this chatbot uh, for user services. Then Indian Institute of Management is there, the National Library of India is there. They are using this uh, AI tools uh, for different purposes. So there are different uh, so these were these were the case studies where uh, the AI tools are used. Uh, then the last part I can say the there are certain benefits, certain challenges. So benefits are the improving access to information, making better results, decisions, improved user experiences, increasing efficiency, and beginning new uh, services. So data driven uh, decision making. These are the few benefits. On the contrary, there are challenges and concern uh, like uh, whether it can be substitute for human judgment. So that is uh, the concern. Uh, AI can be a biased. AI can be exp expensive. Uh, there might be a job displacement and uh, uh, there might be a harm for data privacy. So there might be some ethical consideration and transparencies. So this, uh, these are the some uh, concerns and challenges before the AI, uh, we have to scope up these challenges. Uh, so AI is most important technological development of our our lifetime. And uh, last quotation I will read and then say acknowledge. We are on the curves of new era of intelligence, and we have the responsibility to shape it for good. So it is by Demis Asabis. 
so with this quotation uh, i will end my this presentation i am grateful to you grateful to the organizers for this opportunity and i'll also i'm grateful to audience for their patience listening i'm i'm thankful to my university authorities honorable vice chancellor and all other authorities for allowing me uh, to uh, give this lecture thank you thank you one and all over to dr bhattacharya sir please thank you dr kulkarni for this in interesting and very you know informative presentation so what basic things we are taking away from this is you know how exactly you know uh, and where exactly in libraries uh, you can use ai and also you know to showcase or rather to know that some of us means our own libraries yes. are have already started using ai so this will definitely help us or rather our participants to start using ai in different form and without fear without fear uh, in mind that you will be able to do it now thank, thank you. you dr uh, kulkarni for this presentation yes. so we will straight away go to dr sara uh, dr sara is director of library learning resource services from the technical university of kenya nairobi he has done phd from Kenyatta University has worked in various libraries as librarian, has been a lecturer in library information science at the Kenya Polytechnic and Technical University of Kenya for many years. Currently, she is director library learning resource services. So um, over to you, Dr. Sara, and you bring you know expertise of yours or maybe a different you know, viewpoint from other than Indian, you know, perspective from a from a different country altogether. Over to you, Dr. Sam. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Doctor, for this. I bring greetings uh, from Kenya to you, the panelists and the, the participants. And I would also like to take this opportunity to thank New Age for the organization of this webinar. It is bringing us together to share and also to learn from each other. So we talk of life being a learning process and therefore we are sharing a lot. I would want to take you through and I thank my, my colleagues who have just uh, presented that we are my paper will look at the strategies for integrating AI technologies into academic libraries. And mostly I'll have to look at uh, the Kenyan context or in the way of Kenya. I would like to mention that there are certain things as professionals that we can ignore, but there are certain things we cannot afford to ignore. Otherwise they will catch us unawares. AI is one of the things we cannot afford to ignore. Noting that libraries exist to provide information access, dissemination of the information and sharing of the information. That should be the guiding factors that we, we have as librarians in accepting and embracing the new technologies to help us achieve this. So the application of AI technology in academic libraries or in the academia, it keeps uh, raising and ending debates. And this is worldwide. It's across the globe. And its immense benefits notwithstanding, there are a number of fears and challenges that come with it. And fears, I think, are very, very real, especially when you look at the professions. If this happens, what will happen to my job? How will I cope with it? So this presentation, therefore, will seek to highlight more on the ways in which librarians integrate AI into their operations, the impact that is likely to have 
as well as the possible challenges. Uh, I think I'll need uh, to share my screen or somebody can do that. Let me share my screen. We, we are looking at the enhanced application of AI technology in the academic libraries. And we need to say that a good number of the libraries are already employing and reaping the benefits of AI, but even without them realizing it. And we are saying that this is being achieved through the use of e-resources and the databases that we have in most of the libraries and the softwares and tools such as the chat GPT, what my colleagues have just mentioned, and especially in the reference services. There is therefore need to take the application of AI a notch higher, because this will help not just in the sharing of resources, but in understanding the user needs of our users in our libraries. Okay. Libraries, we need to realize and appreciate that they are service-oriented units in the academia. And therefore, if we do not embrace the new technologies that are fast and convenient, we would not contribute efficiently to the learning and teaching and supporting and partnering with the programs offered within our universities. Therefore, for library personnel, we have no choice, but we explore on how best to integrate AI into a library routine to achieve the benefits of the AI. And it is important to realize that there are very simple and effective strategies, some that we can be able to afford without uh, a lot of uh, expertise sometimes and not using a lot of money. One of it is to promote the use of the chat services. I would not need to get into that, but especially when we look at the Googlebird and the chat GBT, the academic libraries assist the users or these uh, strategies to assist the users in refining and understanding their queries. Sometimes a user may come without really noting exactly what they are looking for. So the chat GBT helps in the understanding of this. Then we say that some users have queries which are actually not very clear. When you get the appropriate keywords, it helps in searching and getting the information that you're looking for. So these simple uh, strategies, the chat services, even using the Google Translate, it will promote the use of voice search in search engines. And this one has really been helpful, especially when searching in the web. And this also helps in the improvement of learning and teaching within our universities. So as we look at the prerequisites for integrating AI in libraries, first and foremost, we need to appreciate, is there any willingness to embrace change in normal routine? That's a question for all of us. How many of us are very comfortable with embracing the change? But as we look at the change, we all remember when we are moving uh, from using the print books to the e-resources and the challenges that most of the people faced from the users. Even as of today, there are some people who will tell you, I have to read my newspaper when it is in print. I cannot get it when it is in e. So these are things that we need to remember. From the traditional libraries, the number of shelves that we know. Now we have come to the use of the electronic resources, the online databases. Uh, the embracement of that change has helped us. Then the enhanced technological skills for the library, this is important for all the library staff. Therefore, how do we do it so that we can assist the users of our libraries? Our patrons will look up on us to be able to be ahead of them in the information retrieval and access. 
So when we look at today's content, we are saying that you can even have the content, the whole of the content you require in your phone by using my loft. And if this is not AI, then would how would we call it? Because some of it is so, so important for us. Then as we move on, we look at what is the impact of AI technology in the libraries. Without getting into all this, uh, it is important that we say it grants the users the quick access, enhances the search, promotes physical space, economy, and all that. So how can we stand to benefit from the AI in libraries? A lot of this in cataloging, I do not know how many of us remember about Dr. Ranganathan, where he said, we save the time of the user. The technologies are helping us to save the time of the user. Then today, most of the libraries would use the Z39.50, they would use the word cut in their cataloging. It has saved so much time for the technical services staff. And this has also ensured that the resources get to the users faster than what was possible. Then from there, we also need to appreciate that in the user services and referencing, the chat boxes are helping us a lot in data mining. And this is because the new technologies have already brought us into that. I'd like to just mention one out of these very many, that information literacy within the academic libraries is one of the most important services that are being offered, because this is when you train your users on how to use not just the resources, how to search and how to access, but this is the time now you bring in the AI tools and how they can be used. So it is important that uh, from the information literacy, we are able to bring in, including plagiarism checkers like the Turnitin, uh, the AI solutions, so that you can be able to know how much of it is from the human mind intel intellect and how much of it is from AI. And this will help uh, in safeguarding the academic integrity. This is a concern, but if done properly, it is a very positive way of looking at things. And this is something that can be integrated into the library system itself. So as we look at uh, the, the challenges, one of it is the competency gaps. We all agree that there are gaps that we require as library personnel. There is also the resistance to change. Most of us fear the unknown, but we are saying the unknown is probably better than what we know. And the most difficult one is the inadequate funding to enhance the library infrastructure. This one, I believe that all libraries are suffering from it. Then of course, there is the ethical concerns such as the AI replacing human labor and encouraging laziness. But when we integrate this into our everyday uh, life in the libraries, we are seeing the benefits outweigh the, the fears. In conclusion, I would like to mention that uh, the impact of AI on library operations cannot be emphasized enough. It promises to enhance the experience and administrative personnel assistance and users so that you connect the resources, the users and the library staff. But there is also need to sensitize our stakeholders in order to circumvent the inevitable challenges. It is important for us to realize that uh, AI is an enabler and we need to look at it very positively, but we also need to know that the equitable access to AI tools is important for all of us. So that was a very brief uh, introduction of what the presentation is all about, what is being done in uh, our libraries, and the most important, how is it impacting on the users? 
we are still in Kenya, we are still at the baby steps, but as we move on, we are getting somewhere. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Dr. Sara. And it was very nice to know that in Kenya, you are also you know, thinking in the same way that library operation needs uh, some of the some of the um, you know AI operations or AI applications should be part of library, and you have already started working in this uh, you know regard. Now, <clears throat> so we will go back to our next uh, speaker, and next speaker is very well known one. You know, uh, in library profession in uh, in India, you know most of us are um, familiar with name of Dr. S.M. Pujar. So, Dr. Pujar is Chief Librarian, IGIDA, that is Indira Gandhi Institute of Development Research, Mumbai. He is recipient of IFLA, ALP, and Commonwealth Professional Fellowship. He has more than 42 publications to his credit, out of which 28 plus publications have been published in national and international journal. His areas of research include internet resources, search engines, discovery tools, open access, ICT application to libraries and research metrics. But more than that, Dr. Pujar is a very well-known speaker at multiple events and you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's a person who can you know, really tell you many more things which we are not actually maybe capable of. Over to you, Dr. Pujar. Thank you, Dr. Bhattacharya, for your introduction and nice words. Uh, I, let me share my presentation. First of all, I would like to thank uh, New Age International uh, and for giving me this opportunity to share some of my views uh, regarding AI. Uh, I chosen a topic AI and its impact on search because search being one of the important area in, the, in our library and information science. So how it is uh, uh, going to impact or how it is impacting over today. So I've given some examples uh, uh, wherein that I would like to show that how it is changing. And uh, most of the information what I'm sharing is pretty much available on the internet. And uh, most probably uh, one of our uh, professional colleagues from Singapore uh, around today, he has done an excellent work on uh, this search, how the AI impact and all. And if you interested, you can please work. So based on which I uh, made this small presentation, uh, for 15 minutes, I'll take 15 minutes to cover and uh, hope to give some uh, perspective regarding how uh, the impact of AI can be uh, uh, found in the search and discovery of the uh, information. So where in, during this my presentation, I'll be uh, covering uh, how, uh, how has the search changed over a period of time. And uh, search before and after AI, uh, giving us uh, some uh, examples, how it, it can be seen that. And uh, database is how is the search is going to change in the future. See, whatever database we are subscribing to. And uh, many of them are in a beta stage now. So shortly, in maybe by the beginning of next year or mid of next year, we'll be getting those products. And we will we, we'll all, our users, and we start uh, using. And I'll give my final remarks on uh, uh, whatever I'm doing. So as all of you know that AI, all of them, some of my professional colleagues, they already talk about AI and its usefulness, what are the different tools available. Uh, out of the AI, see one of the area is the generative AI, which which when the chat GPT came in uh, last November. So then the uh, euphoria started and people started defining it very useful and it's uh, started using it and also started trying to find out. And it quickly gazed a very uh, good number of people started following all over the world. So what it is basically, they, they follow the large language model. So in the, the sense that they build their database. Uh, using uh, different kind of GPT is the as uh, it stands for generative pre-trained uh, transformer, wherein that they collect the information and try to provide the answers to the queries rather than how our search engines provide the information. I have transformed the way we search and discover information in today. We can say that as some of my colleagues already mentioned, say that using Chat GPT or Google Bard or uh, many other uh, tool which is uh, developed for uh, for uh, giving classes or preparing the class notes or in order to prepare the presentation on that. So in a way that in, in case of the search, we are uh, moving away from searching to finding direct answers on any topic. Okay, for example, whenever we search our library catalog or we are searching already Google search engine, where that we search for the information. We don't get an answer to what I'm trying to look for. For example, I am trying to cover in some of the examples in the, this thing. See, for example, I want to know about 
uh, what is digital library? Okay, if you are you, you if you enter a keyword digital library, we tend to get the different sites where that keyword is uh, is been indexed in this, in this database or the index Google index. So where do we get the uh, search results for that? Depending upon what we're trying to search, maybe on other, any other topic of library or maybe the area of uh, your researchers where you are uh, working in. And uh, shift from keyword key, keyword based search to prompts. Okay, for example, keywords where that as we have studied during our courses, uh, where that we we identify the keywords and we use the boolean operators, all those things, and try to make a search. But that we are moving away from that and going for the prompts. Prompt is basically we'll use a natural language. Okay, what is digital? Please tell me. Okay, what is digital library? Now, in chat GPT, many of you might have explored it. Okay, I'll say that what is digital library, or I'll say that. Uh, what is the integrated library management system? Or I can say that uh, how I can uh, find out how I can make effective search on the Google. Something, whatever topic of your interest, we just give the queries and uh, these generators provide the information. And uh, in also in the coming age, already in chat GPT, I will use the voice, where in that even through interactive, just you can like Google Assistant, how you, you talk, you can talk that and then you'll be able to get the answers. In a way that, see, we're moving uh, away from the keyword or lexical search way. It's somewhat kind of a semantic search kind of a thing. Uh, because this is evolving. I, I cannot say that straightforward. It is moving away there like that. It's still evolving. So I can say that in a way it is moving towards semantic search way that very pre precise uh, these things searches, you are able to get it uh, through these kind of things. Uh, and uh, the other thing is what we are trying to find out with this AI application, the improved relevancy of the content. The relevancy, what, what I'm trying to look for, okay, the relevance to the topic is, is much better. So you, you get a relevant content. And the other thing which has happened because of these uh, tools is extraction of information papers from paper to enhance the search results. See, in case of uh, Google, where the type put an inquiry that is simply providing me the results wherever the keyword has appeared. Whereas now, we, in case you want to uh, find out the information, what content is available within the PDF, of course, Google do a surface within the PDF files. But when you want to extract the information from papers to enhance the search results, so then, for example, there is a tool where in that now it is possible to get a summarization of multiple papers or a summarization of a single paper. It is possible to find out what this paper talks about. You can query the uh, different kind of AI tools from there, we will be able to get the information. And also uh, now it's very uh, easy to find the fixes to the computer coding. For example, earlier, whenever we are trying to, of course, till now also we use Google, whenever we find across some query, say, for example, you're using Koha library software and you come across some kind, some kind of a problem, then you can uh, put a query in the Google, you'll be able to get answer because some or other people who are discussing in this discussion forum, forum you'll be able to get the result from that. But now through the chat GPT kind of a thing, it is possible to yourself can directly develop a code without knowing the programming language or scripting language. For example, you want to develop a home page and you, you want a simple library home page. For that, you need a HTML code. You put a, a query in the chat GPT, it will automatically generate a code. Using that, just you need to, uh, using that code, you can develop a simple web page for your website. Of course, you can create a multiple pages as per your requirement. So that is very much possible. Not only that, even the uh, programming language like C++ or Python. So even you can say the thing, what you want to develop, then it will provide you the coding for that. But only the problem with this AI uh, LLM uh, large language models is that uh, caution because they they use search information as many times it may have a bias because it depends on the what kind of information they have collected. Uh, so uh, it, for example, you might have heard that there's a racial discrimination uh, from many of the image generators that have happened because the whatever information, because this large language models uh, work based on the what, are, what all the information it has been fed into its system, or what all information it has been collected in order to train the train that model. So based on which it will try to provide the information. So that kind of a racial thing which has happened earlier. So those kind of bias may be there, and inaccuracy and incomplete incomplete information is very common. For example, now Chat GPT three, Chat GPT three point five version, what we all use is. Uh, whenever you search on any topic, it provides information, but it cook, cooks up many attacks. It, it hallucinates. So because many times, whatever references it provides, most of the times uh, they do not exist. It. it simply provides the information. So there in that, there in that we as a library need to take a caution and also we need to make our users aware of that. 
And another issue in relation to the is to copyright, where that we we talk about copyright and we also tell our users how they should not uh, uh, infringe the copyrights in order to when when they are under treatment. Because most of the LLMs uh, harness the published information. They they take the images or they take the published works which are available on the internet or on the various platform. They have amassed all the kind of content and it's been uh, put into their uh, large language. So then there is all, already there are lawsuits going against uh, chat GPT and I am not sure of the Google part, but uh, so these kind of cases are going to be filed because they are, without taking any permission, they are trying to harness the information uh, within their uh, model and that they are trying to provide them. So that way that we have to be extremely careful. So coming to the how search has changed, for example, word, where the retriever means a search engine and whenever we enter uh, any kind of a keywords or uh, enter any kind of uh, even national language. So it through this index, uh, whatever information it has within its external source, it, it searches that information and provide the, provide the search results. Whereas the new now with the AI coming into the picture, so retriever is there, but in between retriever and the results or the answers, what we get, there is a generator. Generator sense like chat GPT or uh, Google Bard, which is sitting there. Uh, GPT kind of language or the BERT, BERT or the other kind of uh, LALMA or whatever kind of language they are using. It is sitting and trying to provide you the answers rather than the results. It's called a retrieval augmented generation, where that it improvises how the results can be provided using any kind of a tool uh, like chat GPT. So it helps you to get a better results and uh, uh, where is that so that you will find a very good resources where that it has improved. For example, if you directly search from a chat GPT, you will not get any sources. Definitely. But same thing if you use through the Bing, the Bing chat, where that Bing chat is based on the chat GPT only, it will provide you the results with the references. So that what happens when you try, there is evidence and from where it is taking the information. And uh, Bing is a current like that, you need not have to pay. Otherwise, if you are subscribed to Charge GPT 4, you have to pay $15 per month. Whereas if you use Bing, you can freely use it. Okay. So like that, uh, even the Google bar, Google also has come out, come out with a kind of a thing. Now it is making its uh, uh, this thing generator that part the thing can be used if you if you as a personal user it's still in the experimental stage. But if you sign up for this uh, uh, Search engine, uh, this thing, uh, use of AI in search engine, that the option is there. Using your personal Gmail ID, you'll be able to find out the answers. It also, like uh, uh, Microsoft Bing, it also generates the content using its generative AI. I, I'll just, uh, this is how the search uh, has changed because of the generative AI coming into the picture. Now, here is an example where in that I have given a search in the simple Google. Okay, other one is the Google uh, generative AI experimental. So where I use both the things, for example, if you see here this figure, what is digital library if I question, it will provide me the results. Same thing, again, if I using, if I logged into my this thing, personal Gmail account, I've enabled that Google generative AI search, I've enabled it. So first it provides me the generative example similar to the big. So that there is a huge difference in how, what we are going to get, get the information because of the generative uh, AI yeah, inter, uh, uh, interconnectivity between the kind of existing uh, tools like a general search engine like Google or a Bing. So they try to provide a better answers to the what we're trying to search. This is a huge impact and huge difference. Okay, what we can find with a normal search engine with the AI uh, generative AI, which is coming into the picture. So using that, you can try to make a difference in the search what you are trying to make it. This will not only impact you as a librarian, it will also impact your users. Similar to coming to the academic search engine, how it is going to be different. For example, I use your example of Google Scholar and Daily Seek. So Google Scholar, if you put what is same question, so it will provide me the results of all the papers where the digital libraries or a digital library is being appeared in the either title or abstract. And of course, along with the links on the right side, which are really available along with the the details of a little abstract and citation information, all this is going to provide. Same thing if I search in ILSA, even the ILSA database size is very small compared to the Google, but still it, it, it provides a much more exhaustive or a better information than the Google. See here, what I'm, this example, I'm not sure whether you are able to see the screen clearly. It, here it is trying to summarize four of the top papers on the topic of digital library. Apart from that, it also has a multiple columns, like here I give the sub columns like uh, study design or a participant count or a type of study, what it is being undertaken and the region also. Those kind of things you can mention there and you'll be able to 
get the results and also you'll be able to see here the, the way it is providing answers uh, summary of the papers along with the references along with the in-text citation it's trying to provide it so in case if you are trying to review any of the literature you're trying to teach your users how to review the literature and this is going to be one of the tool where only thing is free version has a limitation and in case if you say even they, they are now providing for institution level services also if you are interested you find this tool to be very useful you can explore it and you can try to uh, see that with how best it suits to your requirement so this is a, how it is differencing even in academic world so when you're when your user or you are trying to access the content so you find a clear distinction between how uh, a Google Scholar and of course Google Scholar also might introduce, introduce generate AI soon. So at that time, you'll be able to get the similar kind of results from that also. And uh, databases, what are the things are going to change? Search will be based on a national language instead of the keywords where in you can enter the question to get the results. As I, as I given the earlier example, so you can enter a question using a natural language to get the results. Results in the sense that results are provided as a summarization of the papers and concept mapping is undertaken by some products like Scopus AI. Scopus AI recently has come out with the beta. Recently, we had a, in one of our workshops, which organized on AI, where they presented the case study, where they presented the Scopus AI. It, is, it has a robust kind of a thing and where that definitely it's going to make a huge impact the way we search or we try to find out the citation information or summary of the papers, what is being indexed. Of course, they are not providing very in-depth. They have started from 2018 onwards. So you have to see that how the bot is going to work and how it is trying to provide the answers to the questions, whatever the users are, so, uh, database users are asking for it. And others beta on the way are uh, Web of Science is also now uh, working on a, a beta AI tool, which is going to come up soon. And Simulate Dimensions AI, which is our digital science, they also introduce, introduce the AI tool, which can be used now to find out the uh, you know, you can you can uh, make queries with the database rather than simply making a searches. JSON has come out with this beta AI version, which is uh, uh, soon is going to be. If you are ready to volunteer for it, definitely. Only thing is, you, you need to register on the site. If you have access to the JSON, you can register on it, and then you can request for the uh, beta version to be testing. Then you will be able to get access to that. Using that, you can you can make a searches and try to find out and also. Once it is made available, then you can you will be able to in a better position to uh, educate your users in making better use of JSON so that they can find out from any of the each of the papers what they search and uh, try to find out what the content is, what this paper talks about. All those can can be seen. similarly in the open access arena. There is the core database which all of you know that in the UK based uh, database. It is a competition of uh, different uh, uh, open access collections. It uh, it harnesses. Now they are also deploying uh, AI tool in order to summarize the papers, which is soon going to come. It's still under a beta stage. Apart from the papers, AI is also being deployed in statistical databases. One such example is Bloomberg Finance, which has already been implemented and which is available, but unfortunately it's available only for the subscribers. So then I don't have access to that. And the other one important in the medical sciences is the medical diagnosis, which is coming out with a med pump by Google. So Google research, which they are coming with, wherein that they are going to study the important, all the health information, then it will, it, this tool is going to help the doctors in diagnosing any kind of a disease for a particular particular kind of patients. So we, and also it will, it will help them to write the prescriptions. I don't know how it is going to work in the future, only it's going to tell that it is in the, uh, now MedPalm, initially in MedPalm 2 is there now. I think maybe it will uh, come, you know, MedPalm will be made available to the, uh, medical professionals soon. And there are many more domain specific, like in the law also, there are something in there. And even in the, in our field also, there is a kind of experiment that are going on. And one such example, many of you, if you have seen the recent allies forum post, where library GPT, something like social well and organization in India, they are trying to develop uh, where that they are uh, asking for some libraries to participate so that we use that uh, data of the different libraries to train uh, their model and try to provide services. Maybe they, they want to provide a service to the different libraries. And here, this is an, a screenshot of uh, Scopus AI, where in that how, for example, here's a query, which is uh, taken from uh, the Google uh, images. So factors that uh, contribute to the quarterly, I think I taken it from the Nature uh, Journal article. So here it provides the summary and also ask you what, what are the specific changes in the heart rate or something like further, you somebody wants to investigate. 
so then you can do that even you can some users can find out the references from where it has fetched even the in text citation it has made within the summary what it has searched for like similar to elicit and also here the map it is giving like concept map as i mentioned to you there so it also provides the map for each of the thirsty seek what it makes so here is there is a, a one small uh, video which i would like to show if there is a time so this is a video is there of course you can uh, check it from the elsewhere website sure whether you will uh, listen to the sound Now it has moved from beta to alpha. As another example, what I was talking about the list store. So this is also in a beta version now. That is the Scopus AI has gone moved to alpha version. So here also you can make a search, you can query with any of the paper what you are searching for. So this, this video, video is available on the YouTube, which we can explore it. Uh, so where is that you can query and try to find out what this paper talks about and uh, what is this text about. Even again, sub queries are there, you can, you can query it further. So it will be able to, you'll be able to find out what the papers talk, talk about. And uh, my final remarks are on this, uh, this thing, impact on searches. Impact of AI on search is for sure, it's going to happen, but keyword search is going to remain. It's like that, it doesn't mean that uh, because we have moved into AI as a keyword search, what we're trying to do or our users are trying to do will go off. No, it's not going to go off because it's going to remain because it has it has its own advantages whenever you're trying to find out, look, out, look, look out for the information. The way we people are going to make the search will change forever. That's what you and me or our users are going to, the, the way we are going to make search is going to be changed forever. And there could be demand from the users for our library catalog. This library should also adapt to AI tech uh, to enable users effectively explore the content and metadata of what we are having. And it, it, it thus, because of the AI tool, uh, it helps in the saving the time of researchers and getting getting exactly what they want instead of taking for the sources of information they have to undertake and then try, try to analyze it. Uh, but one needs to be aware of bias and uh, hallucination, like hooking up things is a problem, big problem. Isn't, yeah, maybe it will improve over a period of time and because it is becoming intelligent day by day. And other problem which has been expressed in the literature is plagiarism of AI output is possible. For example, there is a summarization of papers which I just showed you. So people may take as it is and try to put it in their papers or try to put it in the review of literature. Then there's a big problem because this is going to be completely because of course plagiarism checking and all with AI content is coming up, but still it is evolving. So there's another area which we need to aware. So here the key is orientation, providing orientation or information to the users. So to make them educated will be the main key. I would like to uh, Thank you, and this I end with my presentation. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Dr. Puja, and as usual, you have really, you know, taken up a wonderful area of uh, which is of, you know, most important uh, probably in the library science that you know how to get the good output out of the search. Of course, we in the profession are using keyword search full text or natural language search, relevant search, many things, AI search will be another one. But the important thing, what is out, outcome of this, you know, presentation is, you know, keyword search will remain. And that means your professional, you know, um, requirement will remain. So you have to actually scale up your competency level to that extent so that you can use these you know ai tools one of the uh, in the in the in the uh, in the in the uh, question answer session we will definitely learn more from our panelists that what will be the approximate cost of you know implementation of some of this ai or gen ai driven tools such as you know scopus ai or something uh, of those you know publishers which they are actually will be developing so that you know librarians will get an idea of what exactly uh, in the initial cost of such implementation other than 
open AI. For that, they have to develop their own skill set, but you know, they have to shell out some money as well. So we'll come back to the you know other panelists, and in our case, next panelist is thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Puja. And our next uh, panelist is uh, Surendran uh, Cherukadan. So uh, Dr. Surendran is assistant librarian in School of Engineering, Cochin University of Science and Technology, Kerala. He has 22 years of professional experience and he is writer and reviewer of national and international journals. He owned 2019 Emerald Literacy Award for best paper from the Emerald Publisher UK. So over to Dr. Surendran for uh, your uh, you know presentation on how we will use modern day in different you know libraries. How will you use AI in libraries? Over okay. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bhattacharya, sir. So I will be uh, just uh, first of all I would be thanking. Uh, New Age Publishers for giving me this important opportunity. And uh, as you know, my uh, topic is AI for digital libraries. I think uh, you can see Shodhganga website now. Yes, sir. Okay. So Shodhganga is actually based on DSpace software, as you know. And DSpace software is used by many libraries across the world for building digital libraries. So we can see, for example, I have given it a, a, a keyword for uh, getting a thesis and you can see this thesis uh, uh, with the metadata plus full text data. Okay. Similarly, we have also created a DSpace digital library uh, at Kusat, Kusat, where we have many items including just one intellectual property protection, one article, one article. Okay. So when we take these uh, items, when we take these items, we can see that there is no even though there are many articles related to intellectual property in Kusar Digital Library, users cannot get an idea about this. But when you use in case similar uh, searches on databases like uh, our uh, publishers databases, that is full text databases like Sansterag, uh, Wiley, Emerald, etc. So there you can see if, because I have given a keyword for flood in Kerala in 2018. So we can see a full text article plus we are getting recommendations or suggestions that is based on our search and based on previous searches for this particular article Sandsterg has learned or the AI machine or AI um, incorporated software has recognized that this user will be able to will be helpful if he reads this article too. That is the AI incorporation by prominent publishing platforms. So my recommendation is we can also implement these recommendation system to digital libraries. So my area is AI for digital libraries. So when we when we adopt recommendation systems in systems like DSpace, ePrints, or many other software, open source softwares for digital libraries, we will be able to identify enough articles. For example, this particular article, this uh, flood in Kerala article, there will be similar articles identified by AI for the user so that users can identify or retrieve more articles. So, uh, this kinds of this kind of mechanism can be built by libraries and this i recommend this no i suggest code contributors system administrators dspace ambassadors for incorporating recommender systems to dspace software in future so that ai would be able to a enabled digital libraries would be able to serve our users more uh, uh, more Okay, and one more thing, for example, now, as you know, uh, in order to get more citation, more number of articles, we need, for example, I'm just now taking this uh, uh, NIRF data, NIRF ranking framework. Here you can see that this there is an RPC score. So RPC score actually 
RPC score comes from number of articles and number of citations. So how can we improve citations? One way is building an open repository and archiving our preprints or uh, articles that have covered embargo period is over. Embargo period is over so that we can improve. And AI, when we incorporate AI to our digital systems or our, our uh, uh, digital archives, then we will get or our users or our community scholars will get more citation and those citations will be giving us more RPC score. So that is my point. Actually, this is a simple point. Incorporating recommender systems to uh, digital library services. So this is, uh, sir, this is my point and I stop here. And thank you uh, for giving me an opportunity. And I thank Soumya Gupta and uh, uh, other members of New Age International Publishers for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Thank you, sir. Here, Dr. Surendran, we'll come back to you with many more queries. In fact, uh, we have uh, nearly 400 uh, plus you know, participants, so they have a lot of queries. So we'll straightway come back to you. And you have interestingly pointed out one of the most important uh, aspects that digital library everybody is preparing. So how to enhance the you know, reach of that digital library, use of that digital library through citation and all. Now, if citation increases, naturally our research um, value for uh, our scientific users, so that also increases. That is a measure of that. So we hope that, you know, this is going to be uh, definitely taken care of by our, you know, modern day librarians. So our next speaker is uh, Dr. S.S. Choksi. So who is HOD Central Library, Rajiv Gandhi, Proudo Pradodiki Vishavidyalai, Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. And several libraries have completed library automation under his guidance during the, his librarianship. Dr. Choksi is also associated with various professional bodies like ISLIC, SLP, Manlibnet, ILA. He, he had also contributed his experience in different academic libraries in Madhya Pradesh. So over to you, Dr. Choksi. Let us know how exactly uh, you uh, think that you know modern day uh, libraries will be implementing AI. Thank you, Bhattacharya uh, sir. First of all, good afternoon, all of the library professionals. First of all, I will thanks to uh, New Age Publications. They provide the beautiful platform to us uh, for sharing of knowledge. Now, in this session, I will discuss about the electronic resources and e-library. First, uh, digital library overview. The computers of the library during the past few decades using the different type of computerization in the field of uh, resource sharing and uh, uh, creation of record in the form of uh, uh, CD-ROMs, magnetic tapes and other. The digital library was first time defined by the William Y in the year 2009, uh, 2000. The definition of digital library, when we, you can search the digital library in the in the Google or Wikipedia and other source, it defines that digital library as a library which collection are stored in the digital format accessed by the digital uh, device or digital computer. There are many terms of digital library such as e-library, virtual library, library without boundaries, and they are often used as a synonym. Digital library word point in the year 1994 by the US government uh, under his uh, uh, project, Digital Library Project Phase 1. The definition, another definition of digital library, digital library is a library which collection are stored in the digital format and accessed through the network or internet by the help of electronic device or computer that, that the, the e-resource can be accessed by locally or remotely. 
uh, according to ifla the most uh, the digital library e library and other the th things are very popular the form of digital library or it's uh, the most popular word is uh, digital library that's why we are using always the digital library terms in, in the field of library and information fine e library is a an database of uh, library resources that can be stored in the form of text images audio video and other online uh, digital format digital library invented in by the mechel s hart in the year 1971 ebooks first published terms in 1978 digital library word is popular by the nasa USA in the year 94 uh, in India first digital library established by the ministry of mhrd in the year 2016 and uh, with the 20 million of resources now it is ndli having a more than 100 millions of electronic resources available for academic purpose and for general reading the uh, a e library or digital library defined also the as a electronic virtual and hybrid and uh, library uh, now in the form of cd roms in the uh, virtual library using the uh, virt uh, virt remote access software the types of digital library the uh, digital library divided into th three types that uh, is standalone library example is library of congress digital library established in the year 2009 and national digital library of india which is established in the 2016 another example of the uh, sdl is internet public library second type of uh, digital library is uh, federated digital library that uh, uh, example is oclc and harvested digital library is the example of uh, public library of america and national science digital library us the component of the digital library is uh, Uh, when we are using the establish the digital library at that time we uh, requires the some components like collection uh, development of infrastructure then digital library organization access of infrastructure and computer network and infrastructure copyright ipr and drm rights also component of the digital library and uh, the most powerful Uh, services of the digital library services the digital library of india well known digital library of india is the ndli uh, health mumbai it health uh, uh, digital library and terry is the fundamental tata fundamental research institute uh, also provide a digital library for uh, terry and uh, the iit kharagpur also having a digital library. even uh, our institutional university uh, is a biggest university li li digital library system is there that's called rgpb digital library the advantages of digital library is that uh, if we are establishing the uh, digital library that uh, electronic resource or uh, digital library having a effective accurate and authenticated data Th that controls the plagiarism also easy to access speed up access easy to cite it easy to access anywhere anytime large scale of data storage required less space access information virtually access of information remotely access of information current and future users uh, on on the basis of we will uh, uh, subscribe the resources on the basis of uh, perpetual access multiple access with the with the with the simultaneous users access online offline also and other way another end advantage is there the importance of the digital library is also important uh, due to his, his uh, its features uh, like like client server architecture hyper navigation user friendly interface access digital content uh, integration with other digital collections store and organize and manage in the form of digital format the access information digitally and economically and uh, e library having a universal access also suggestions to improve or uh, establish a digital library the some suggestions are 
improving internet speed if abr is uh, or network width if we have a good uh, internet bit then we will easily access the electronic sources by the digital library subscription of more resources if you are we are uh, improving our collections in the form of electronic resources obviously our digital libraries enrich in the form of resources organize in digital library training and orientation programs for users if uh, we are increasing to involvement of our user in uh, in the uh, uh, digital library at that time we will uh, definitely uh, provide a training uh, and orientation to our users the acquire the electronic resources like e books e journals e database uh, establish the more computer terminals for ex easy access to our uh, users contents upgradation and wifi network also then can users can access the uh, digital library by the laptop mobile phone and other way and we will create a user survey to improve the digital library services limitations also there the, the, the limitations of the digital library is there the uh, if we are establish or uh, uh, provide the services to the digital library definitely we need the electricity internet uh, electronic devices or computers and uh, network speed also and due to digital library there is no human interface that's why uh, many librarians have left the job or the jobless and lack of uh, clarity of copyright act and drm rights uh, due to lack of budget we are not uh, procured the some good resources and lack of expertise in the field of uh, digital library that's why some uh, libraries having you know no good expertise they were not managing the in proper way of digital library the technology issues are also there and access speed also the part dr chopsi yeah so uh, will you please uh, take uh, five how, how long will you take maybe five more minutes yeah okay okay, okay. so maybe in five minutes you conclude yeah yeah okay. Uh, there, there is another uh, open access e library and closed access e library then um, Uh, library is providing open access uh, for uh, many people or uh, for uh, uh, general people they were can access easily and if uh, um, uh, closed access library is library that is uh, restricted access to some specific users or members only some important disclosure is there that uh, technical infrastructure of digital libraries uh, uh, the digital library requires the Uh, hardware input device storage device communication device and uh, server software uh, and uh, requires the digital library software this uh, this space software is also open source software which is help to uh, establish a uh, archives of digital library uh, there is another software free of cost which is uh, green stone uh, e print is there content dm is there and uh, fedora is there the hardware requires in the in, in, for internet and uh, reading of pdf library services the digital library provide the email alert enhancement alert new issues alert citation alerts publication alert e books services alert series alert database alert reference work alert and search alert the digital library planning uh, to establish or planning the digital library at that time digitalization cost count and the uh, subscription cost is count and the uh, operating uh, uh, of digital library cost is there and uh, training cost is there and other things is there digital library requires the some uh, digital resources collection in the digital library uh, in the form of e books e journals e database and uh, uh, other uh, even if you are uh, increase your digital library resources then you use the oer open educational resource link in your digital library various type of electronic resources there need of digitalization quality preservation and um, multiple referencing then we will using the digital library wide area of use archival storage is there security measure that's why we will 
interest to establish a digital library. Open access journals. Uh, these journals, which is available in the um, uh, open source way, if you are in, increasing your uh, library, digital library, they, they link to these open uh, source journals in your uh, digital library also. Institutional repository, you can also uh, uh, link with the, the, uh, these uh, institutional repositories in your digital library. Electronic books, so many uh, uh, books are uh, freely available on the net. You can also link these books on your digital library. Open courseware, so many open courseware is available uh, free of cost. Then if you are enrich your digital library, you link these uh, resources on your digital library. Metadata harvesting services is there. Uh, even so many uh, 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 sites provide the uh, the metadata services, uh, harvesting services to the UN. If you are this, uh, improving or describing, then you collect it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Choksi. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, it's a very, uh, you know, elaborate presentation. And I think, you know, um, you would have um, presented much better if uh, you got more time. So unfortunately in this present uh, webinar we have very limited time and you know some discussions needs to be done there are many queries have come up so um, uh, we will straight go to our last but not the uh, least last speaker dr prashant thank you Bajachari. thank you sir dr prashant goswami so dr prashant goswami is library officer at indian institute of management mumbai Prashant Goswami ji is a uh, highly experienced librarian with over 15 years of experience in the field of library science, currently holding position of library officer. And he has a uh, strong educational background and notable contributions to research. And he will be uh, talking on artificial intelligence and library services. So over to you, uh, Prashant ji. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bhattacharya. And uh, thank you, team uh, New Age, to giving me the, uh, giving me this opportunity to be a part of this webinar. So move, moving ahead, uh, I think I uh, suggested by Dr. Bhattacharya earlier that the topic has already been covered. That should not be repeated. And I also feel in the same way because the, our uh, previous presenter had covered this AI with the library, that association very well and in very deep manner. So uh, I will skip those uh, few points, but I, I will start from my presentation with my institute de uh, description. And uh, after this uh, one slide, I will say why I, I have included uh, this uh, institute presentation and, and my to intro introduce my organization. So I, I think that it is known uh, and it is known to you. Uh, this is the 60 year organization now. And uh, now as a, uh, an IRF ranking, we are in the seventh uh, place. So a uh, few, few things I would like to uh, mention about uh, NITI. Now this is an IM Mumbai from this year onwards, from August uh, 2023 onwards. So uh, NITI, uh, as a NITI, we have already taken some initiative uh, in the field of AI. And uh, two, uh, uh, one major project we are running uh, very recently, we have started with uh, a digital trust. So that is a very unique project, and uh, this is uh, that uh, this is in collaboration with few or other organizations. So that is how I uh, that is why I just would like to mention that as organizations also we are working uh, on the AI. So moving ahead, uh, yeah, uh, this already has been covered, I think. So I will move ahead. So I will I just uh, want to show that uh, the. Um, growth of the AI in next couple of uh, years, uh, starting from the 2019. So this is uh, the very uh, uh, detailed uh, 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 detailed uh, um, that structure has been given. I, I have mentioned already the resource from where I have took it. So this is a very uh, well, uh, that is a very growing market, I can say. And government of India also has uh, some contributed very recently in the month of August, I guess, uh, month of August. 14,000 crore rupees for uh, uh, scaling up, um, uh, uh, scaling up uh, the uh, 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 that human resources uh, in the field of AI. 
so they have given the very detailed uh, um, uh, fields that in which area that uh, human resources need to be uh, have expertise in it uh, in considering with ai so application of ai uh, uh, as i have uh, told that earlier ki our uh, previous presenter uh, has already covered ai uh, application of ai with the libraries so uh, i will uh, i uh, i want to say uh, the specific topics where we can uh, have the um, uh, application of ai uh, to uh, for the user uh, sorry uh, where we can have a more application of ai to give the more uh, specific services to our user community so to uh, to start with i will um, that uh, data uh, data management and analysis that cataloging and that acquisition so i would say that in acquisition already we are having some uh, uh, that uh, um, already uh, that is standard format how to uh, uh, to contact with the vendors and to so in in that way using of application using applications of ai that uh, uh, so, uh, that save our more time and uh, so uh, uh, i would uh, like to mention a specific area where i think that application of ai is more crucial and more required uh, many libraries are subscribing the online journals and online ebooks and uh, that many other online services what i feel in my previous year my uh, practice in the libraries that many times we uh, uh, when uh, we are uh, renewing our services then only or in between when user is complaining that some particular site is not working then only we go and uh, uh, we check the uh, we, we check the access but on regular basis uh, we i think uh, as I can say from my part that it is a very uh, tedious job because uh, if library is uh, having good uh, 10,000 more or uh, uh, just like university libraries, they are having uh, many of the online resources. So it is very difficult at the part of the library staff to check the access and everything. So I think now uh, this is the uh, high time that AI can uh, application of AI to have some uh, robust system to check automatic uh, check system so that the access of the uh, things can be checked on regular basis and very frequent basis so that any user when they want the any resource and any information that that is there with them because all, already in the subscriptions i think many libraries are having uh, in, investing a very huge amount nowadays to name the uh, uh, to name the that publishers like uh, elsevier to wiley to taylor francis so if you are subscribing their one or two databases, that cost is going very high. And uh, with the conversion rate, uh, uh, that exchange rate uh, inflation, now we can say that in terms of INR, any, uh, any library has to pay a very handsome amount to these publishers. So uh, that is our responsibility. If uh, we are paying a handsome amount and very, uh, go, uh, very big amount to these publishers, uh, uh, this affects our budget also. So the services should be with the users every time, 24 by 7. Second thing that uh, we used to subscribe or we used to, many libraries, uh, mostly libraries used to have uh, uh, one single uh, platform, one discovery platform or federated search platform to uh, give the output, uh, to give the result to the users uh, uh, what we are subscribing with, right? But there is a one, um, uh, I think every uh, speaker will be agree with me, to integrate every kind of data with these platforms, it is not so easy and sometimes it is not possible. Just uh, I would like to give some example like uh, we subscribe ebooks, we subscribe e-generals and we subscribe market databases with some other ass uh, assistive online services, right? So if any particular information on, or any keyword that is available with the market database to integrate the market database with the um, this uh, integrated platforms, this uh, single uh, search platform, it is very tedious sometime. And um, uh, many uh, these publishers don't allow or it is uh, actually it is not possible to integrate with the search platform because they are indexing and their keywords are very much different with the uh, keywords of the books and other things. So I think now we have to uh, uh, think in this way also for everything that library is having that should be uh, searchable with the single sign on or single plat uh, single discovery platform. Second thing I uh, I would like to mention uh, a few things uh, uh, my previous presenter presenter has uh, 
mention about the uh, citation uh, uh, citations that is uh, quite uh, uh, um, that rank uh, that is required for for the ranking purpose so i would like to uh, uh, mention about our experience into it because uh, uh, there are some tools available in the market that is that uh, they are using ai applications and they are promising they are uh, promising uh, uh, with their pre presentation that they, they are able to uh, that uh, still your uh, publication is under paywall but they are able to uh, uh, make out uh, out if, uh, out of the paywall and this will be reflect in your uh, um, uh, what to say that citations and in the ranking of the institute so we have experienced it we have used some uh, software for that I, uh, I don't want to take any name in the public platform, but yeah, our experience was not so good uh, in in, uh, in terms of that ranking of the institute, that software they are providing and the services they are providing. Secondly, uh, uh, that uh, that there are many, uh, that uh, uh, the drawback I want to mention about this, some market-based database that are that using the AI application because uh, uh, sometimes the data are very much good but it is not in accessible with us uh, in term, uh, even we are paying a very handsome amount in, uh, for it uh, again uh, this is a not good if i mention any name on it but yeah again uh, second service i would like to say for the uh, that where uh, where else we can use the application of ai in the library services just like uh, uh, library space design just like uh, uh, um, uh, that uh, ai companion kind of thing uh, because ai companion i i just uh, want to elaborate a little bit uh, what we are thinking what we are searching uh, to uh, in the concept and we want to search uh, for the thing that ai companion kind of concept can be developed in this uh, uh, to to get a more good results um, uh, using the ai applications so I think that the AI companions kind of uh, concept uh, that that can help uh, the libraries and the users of the libraries to get the uh, better result of the subscription and uh, to have the more users of the uh, uh, subscriptions and the uh, that will uh, also give us the uh, good cost benefit analysis too, right? So uh, so moving to the new. Yeah, these are some uh, advantages and the uh, uh, disadvantages of the AI. But uh, uh, yeah, we are very well, uh, we know that there are very good advantages of the AI in the library, uh, what we are going to use it, just like uh, one presenter has mentioned about the Shiri. So that uh, that is uh, something uh, called, we, we can call it that AI companion, because uh, whatever you, uh, maximum uh, very uh, ma maximum thing that you uh, ask for the siri and uh, she will answer you so that how we can customize this ai companion for the library services that is a uh, that will be good for the library librarians and the users of the library and in the disadvantage i would like to say that uh, uh, we should follow two things that technology for all and everyone should have the technology so that AI, uh, that is starting of the AI applications in the libraries, I think that uh, th uh, this should be for the all kind of libraries, that the basic purpose, uh, that the basic need of the all libraries should be covered so that the technology development and the things uh, should develop in such manner that uh, libraries of every cat uh, category um, uh, should use that thing. And second thing, uh, we should also consider the cost benefit analysis now, while we are going uh, to adopt the uh, uh, AI. So I, I would like to conclude my thing with the last thing. Ki, uh, uh, creation should not uh, replace the creator. That also should be kept in mind. And thank you very much uh, for your, uh, for the, uh, to, to each and everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prashant, for this interesting presentation. And you have covered excellently that what are the uh, different aspects of, um, you know, uh, subjects, basically AI can take care of in a library environment. And uh, unfortunately, we have, we do not have, uh, uh, Dr. Ahmed said from, you know, Nile University, Egypt, and Dr. G. Krishnamurti, who is actually uh, associated with the uh, yeah, Anna University as university library consultant. 
So both of them are uh, have expressed their inability. So we have our all panels member have already you know spoken. So we will resume our uh, discussion right now, and I'll ask the organizer to you know uh, enable the user whosoever has any question. So and I'll ask the users who want to put question. Probably you can you know, uh, put in the question and answer blocks. Many of you have already, you know, added questions. So we will be taking some of them and uh, uh, which are not been answered. First of all, you know, two things is um, uh, coming to my mind. You know, uh, just to give you uh, the esteemed panelists, I want to know from them, you know, Living in India, and of course, a um, uh, representative from Kenya also spoken, we do not have enough, you know, um, <clears throat> ability of our research professionals or rather library professionals to, to develop themselves very quickly in this field. So what are the, you know, um, the, why these... Um, these this, uh, you know webinars actually help them to get some basic knowledge. Do you know any specific you know training course? That's what basically a person asked also, where they can actually enroll them and get trained. So this is this question to is to all panelists. So. Probably, and the questionnaire, uh, our uh, speakers uh, can probably, you know, speak on this particular question. Is there any, any, any organization you know who is training uh, on specific issue of AI for library and where our library staff can go and, you know, get trained? And if so, what is the cost? Because many questions are coming on that particular area. So, Jagdish ji, Prashant, uh, uh, Dr. Pujar, anyone, any any idea? Or, because I do not know, and I think there is no such uh, you know course exist. If that is not the case, then how do we train our library uh, colleagues? Definitely, they will be, you know, using uh, AI, but like, you know, everyone or all other professionals, all other areas, people will start, uh, uh, you know, uh, AI application and we will be the laggards. So, is there any, any, any knowledge you have? Any organization is taking up steps on that? So, I think there is, uh, I am right that there is no such, you know, course. Now, there is a specific query, how AI can help in classification. So, so um, uh, Dr. Shah, can you take up this question? How AI can help in classification? Uh, yes, I... I, I, I can take it up and then uh, any other panelists can uh, chip in. When, when we look at the traditional classification, we all know what we were going through. Like when Rang Dr. Ranganathan was coming with the classification code, the CCC, we all know how tedious it has been for us. And I would like to join in classification together with the cataloging because we are looking at metadata creation and we are looking at uh, tagging the subject area so that a user can get what they are looking for very fast. And at the beginning, you remember we said it's all about access and the dissemination. So one way it can assist in uh, classification is that if you are using any of the new technologies, 
uh, we had mentioned about if you're using Koha, in Koha, it is embedded with the Z39.50. It becomes very easy for you to classify your materials. So resources that were taking more than a week would take less than one day to classify. So the new technologies, whether we like it or not, have really assisted the, the catalogers and the classifiers. When we look at uh, the LC classify, you don't need to get into the classification schemes. You can use the LC, the OCLC classify, and you get the information that you are looking for. That is how it can assist. Thank you. Any any other panelists want to add anything on this question? Okay, uh, actually, truly speaking, this is correct. Uh, correctly, she has already pointed out. One specific area I can say that you know, uh, in 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 AI system, AI runs on. How you how you train your LLM, and in this case, large number of you know uh, books or resources when we catalog. Uh, in in uh, and their their classification we can put in uh, LLM. So AI has ability to pick up relevant books, similar type of books, and can suggest you a few classification number. That is definitely possible. And LOC is already you know uh, have started that those things. Yes, uh, Doctor uh, 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 Nimai Chand Saha. So mm -hmm. if you can just, you know, take up this question further. Uh, uh, thank you, sir, for your giving me the opportunity to enlighten. Uh, actually, question is that how AI can help in classification? Technically speaking, if we drop a question, either Google Bird or ChatGPT, that what are the different books already available in a particular subject? So then Chatbox will give us the names and details of the books. Accordingly, we have to paste these questions to the OPEC, and then we'll get the actual call number of the old books. Then we can have copy and paste of the same call number in the next arrival of the books. Here we are having, based on the classification uh, postulates, principles and postulates, that if any book edition is come out, let's say first edition was 2010, now second edition is 2020. In between, edition of DDC is also being changed. So class number of a particular book, earlier it may be that 515.724 5, integral calculus. Now it may be 515.725 like that. So this silly changes is being uh, differentiated on the classification. So that is the, uh, the authority file business of any particular library to classify. But at this point, AI only help us to tool as a tool to get the existing number of anything and on any great library, big library, or our, as already noted out that LOC or our uh, InfluentNet has a database or our, uh, you know, in uh, DelNet, they have a database. So there also we can pick up and to uh, collect our call number for the quick processing of the books. So that is my submission on first question. Correct. Second question is already uh, answered by one of our colleagues in, uh, in during presentation that you know IIT Delhi, IIT Mumbai, and there are uh, other organizations including Vishwa Bharati and all. So right. they are using AI tool. So we are skipping this question. The third question has already been answered by many. Let's hmm. discuss on fourth. What is our role? What role library will play? in promoting AI tools. So uh, uh, any, any uh, Dr. Pujar, will you please take up this question? What do you think that, you know, our library's role should be? Dr. Bhattacharya, uh, this is Manish. Uh, I think that Dr. Pujar has left. He was, uh, okay. he has to, yeah. So has uh, we, we, we have Prashant here. Can Prashant take up this query? Or Jagdish ji, can you take up this query? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, 
so uh, the role of the uh, library is promoting the AI tools. What we have discussed, like, uh, so uh, again, to take the example of this uh, third question, we how in academics, uh, uh, academic research, uh, how this AI can help. You see, uh, now we have many uh, resources with us. We have e-books, we have e-journals, we have many other resources. We have online courses. The per particular key uh, keyword is available in many platforms. So AI can, with the structured uh, framework, AI can give us the very brief information, including the abstract of the uh, resource. That is how uh, that uh, academic uh, academic activities can be helped, and uh, that uh, AI tools that is uh, being required for development of this kind of uh, structure to define these kind of structure that librarian is the uh, uh, best person to uh, suggest the things. Okay, so what is actually coming up that uh, out that a librarian should like other you know promotional measures use you know the their um, ai tool as a as a as a um, information service and you know develop several events and bring it to different users to resolve their queries so that they start using it so that's what is the thing so question 5 expecting paper to be of no use it's not happening in uh, near term let's skip this question Integrating AI with existing library system may be very difficult. How can librarian overcome? This is question of, you know, training. And that's basically uh, what training programs and resources are available to upskill. So this, again, the question is of upskilling has come up. So Dr. Shah, uh, Dr. Nimai Shah, yeah, please. Can, you, can you tell us? Uh, being in the profession uh, that, you know, uh, do you know any such training program for library, library staff exist? Uh, actually, what happened, separate or dedicated training program for the library professionals to equip with AI is very rare in glory in India, to the best of my uh, knowledge or experience. Uh, beyond my knowledge and experience, there are many things happen, so that I cannot take the responsibility. But the thing is that uh, in uh, in a library like we, let me take the example of our Visvarthi uh, library system. So there we are organizing several sessions on AI technologies for the accelerating the quality and upskill the the academics, including library professionals, so how to use this, how to use that. And one of our teacher has already developed one, uh, you know, uh, on ILM, I mean, LMS, learning management system called onlinevidyatracha.com. There he has conglomerated uh, many, many, many AI tools there. So that is a burning example to us and that is available in our library, in our university website too. And that is uh, approved by our academic council and university authority that as a LMS of Vishwabharati. So in that way, many university by their uh, uh, internal practice and though uh, by virtue of the technology, our notice are available in the web. So when we are organizing anything in online, Though that may be local, but that is actually for local. So anyone are welcome to join there. And we found many library professionals from different parts of India has take, take role in and participated in our webinar. And we found that there are, they ask us to, to, to organize several kinds of program in future through their feedback and during the online session. So in that way, uh, not that week long workshop on AI for library professionals, not with that same cap, exact caption, but in fragmented way, we are trying to upskill our library professionals as well as academics to, to give input for the excellence of the academic arena. This is my submission. Okay. Uh, sir, I also want to add into this question. So very recently, I think last in October, Professor Dr. Pujara has uh, uh, organized one day web, uh, seminar on this topic. And on the Swayam portal and on e and uh, Odimi, there are the portals available and there are the courses running on it. Right. So, and this is a very, uh, this is now ensuing, uh, that is now ongoing uh, uh, technology for the libraries. So, uh, there, there are many things will come up on the uh, internet, on the NISCARE portal. So, there are many things available on the training program related to AI with the libraries. Thank you. Okay, so uh, answer what is uh, we are getting that there are resources. However, there is no concrete dedicated course available for librarians or uh, to understand AI, 
there will be several or there are already several you know training courses uh, or training uh, workshops are in place in fact uh, last couple of months i have attended maybe four or five uh, you know seminar or workshop on this subject it's a conference on this subject so that is how incremental learning happens in library profession and uh, those who are interested probably are uh, requested to follow um, you know uh, the links of these uh, webinars or uh, rather this um, your conferences and participate there you will learn from your network itself so let's go to the uh, next thing so uh, that is how can we check plagiarism of chat gpt now i think turnitin ai is already uh, in place so you can put that uh, and it, it will tell you you know how much is uh, your uh, plagiarism is so this question is um, uh, definitely any any anyone wants to add anything on this because I think uh, from Turnitin, you will get you know plagiarism value. Right, sir. In addition to Turnitin, our at present Drillbit, which we are receiving through Inflipnet, that oh, Drillbit is also on. Drillbit, Drillbit. Huh, Drillbit. Yeah, Drillbit. Yeah, and uh, uh, Turnitin, of course, then e -art job also, compliant mm -hmm. with AI checking, uh, as they said, as the, the, the developer said. And we found that uh, our by our existing practice, Drillbit is also able to check AI, but the, the data curation and the, the legitimacy or accuracy may be yet to be judged. Still, there are many software like, as you said, Tarnitin, this Drillbit, Urkun, and uh, <laughs> they are now checking it. This is. Now, now just uh, let me tell you one thing, being a, uh, you know, we also publish one uh, library journal, which is in the UGC care list as well. World Digital Libraries and International Journal. Now, when we find that, you know, it's it's as a as a senior library professional or an editor can definitely find out that you know this is been done by using Chat GPT. This paper has been prepared by using you know Quillbot paraphrasing. So after so many years of experience, you can say human intelligence we can very well understand this and the moment we see that this is uh, you know actually from uh, this paper developed based on chat gpt so that actually ensure that this guy has no original contribution to make in the profession so we do not you know uh, encourage such paper to be published in our journal so that is we are uh, that is that is our policy i am saying i don't know other journals policy but probably that is the you know policy so it's uh, you, you use chat gpt or any other ai tool for your own it you know, is work, work development but very very you know uh, for a uh, you know any content creation you know, if you use chat GPT directly and create a paper based on that, that is not fair as such. Uh, adding to this, sir, uh, there is one more uh, that we are facing issue with the academic writings, especially in the uh, project report and the thesis. You now there is no clear cut guidelines whether to accept this uh, chat GPT or any uh, AI tool uh, that uh, content, uh, because there is no guideline from the UGC as of now. So we uh, in academic arena also we are having some issues with it ki whether to accept this uh, content or not because without any guideline nobody can reject it but yeah to accept it also, also is a very uh, not a good thing. So can we see if there is there are more questions or that's all? Any other questions, organizers? No, sir. Not okay. Uh, so I have a question. I. That you know, uh, normally all libraries are using open AI system, which are free of cost. And in fact, uh, Dr. Shaha, uh, Dr. Nimai Chand Saha also, uh, you know, sh have shown so many, you know, uh, uh, things are available. In fact, 
Dr. Pujar has also mentioned, uh, and I think Prashant also, you know, discussed on all, all these. But if we have to, you know, procure some resources uh, from the publisher where AI application they have already integrated. So does that cost more? And whether we uh, that, uh, you know, is acceptable to our library, you know, you know, budget or will they be able to, you know, sustain such thing? So that is a query I am having. I don't know whether, you know, this panel will be able to tell me, but, you know, that query is uh, there. Because when you are using AI as a tool in your uh, information product, so naturally cost will be little more. So... In that's terms, sir, I would like to say that, yes, uh, it increases the cost. And it uh, uh, it's uh, the publisher... Uh, that in the name of the publisher, the cost increase more. I can tell the example of the folio. So now you can compare the folio know. with the other products. That we all know, but the issue here is, uh, I think you have only told that cost benefit analysis. Yes. Like the kind of cost uh, increased, whether there will be any provision that uh, I don't want, uh, you know, AI driven thing because my pocket doesn't permit it. So give me a uh, without AI product, then I can probably subscribe. Such thing might also come up. So I just, uh, tell this thing because of uh, that uh, Singapore University, what te ro robotic technology they are using. So actually to having that technology and to maintain that technology and the uh, volume, uh, that library volume we, uh, we cater. So that all thing we need to compare that this kind of robotic technology should be, uh, should we have. And in India, if any library is having, I have my doubts. Yeah. Anyway, so but anyway, those, think, those things think. are yet to come, yet to come in the market. But anyway, uh, those things will come uh, in future, definitely in the uh, education. Yes, uh, Dr. Sara, you wanted to say something. Yes, I, I just wanted to give uh, the Kenyan arena that yes, even if it is going to cost more, we we do have a consortium, and I know New Age is uh, aware of this. Kenya Libraries and Information Services Consortium. Yes. The, the way I look at it, we've already seen that there is no formalized training for AI. And because it is not there, if we can get resources already incorporating the AI, the cost may be a little bit more, but we need to look at what tool do we want? So that as a group, we could be able to either subscribe and get into it. The problem of not uh, thinking beyond this is we will be stuck. So are you suggesting that we should have a library group for um, uh, discussing uh, what kind of tool we should be using in library? That type think... of thing you are suggesting? Personally, I think it would help because some people want it because of data analytics. When we look at the access control system, some people may want that so that we look at what is common among majority of the librarians so that we can map a way forward. Okay. okay. <laughs> Jagdish Ji, last word from you because we do not have any other question. Okay. So um, we had seven questions. So any uh, question you want to discuss or maybe last word you wanted to um, uh, tell the you know participants? Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Uh, there was one question regarding classification. If it yes. is answered, uh, it's yes, okay. Yes. If it's not answered... Questions, questions been answered. Okay, so sir. if you have any other uh, comments to make, you can. No, uh, uh, just what we need, all library professionals needs the training. Uh, for AI, uh, so that has come up. That has uh, come up, uh, as a as a prime, you know, requirement uh, in order to use this technology in libraries. Yes. So that has come up. We also have discussed, uh, you know, other issues, including you know, cost uh, component because cost might be more because you know, uh, technology application whenever you so that technology will ease your process 
Now, easy, easy process means you have to shell out more money. So how the library will meet those uh, budget, et cetera. So we had a little discussion on that as well. There only one <clears> last <throat> area I would like to mention that is the licensing of the things. Because that the licensing really it creates some problems sometimes uh, with the access and with the uh, ILL with the libraries. Okay. Because it has so many hidden uh, uh, terms that initially uh, we may not, we may skip it. So, thank you, Prashant. Now, uh, I'm, you know, handing over to Manish Gupta from New Age yes, for, uh, you know, concluding uh, this, uh, you know, webinar. So, over to you, Manish. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, dear panelists and participants, as we conclude this illuminating webinar on role of AI in modern day libraries, I am filled with gratitude and appreciation for the enriching discussion we have had today. A heartful thank go out to Mr. Soumya Gupta, our Managing Director, New Age International, whose vision and effort brought us together for this insightful exploration. A sincere note of appreciation to Dr. P.K. Bhattacharya, sir, our webinar moderator, and our esteemed guest speaker, Dr. Nimai Chansaha, Dr. Jagdish Kulkarni, Dr. Sara Kibugi, Dr. Pujar, Dr. Surendran, Dr. S.S. Chokse, and Dr. Prashant Goswami. Your expertise and thoughtful insight have elevated our understanding of the dynamic intersection between artificial intelligence and modern library practices. Each of you has left an indelible mark on our virtual gathering, and we are immensely grateful for your contributions. And to our engaged audience, your active participation and thoughtful questions have added a layer of richness to our discussion. Your curiosity and commitment to staying informed about the evolving landscape of libraries are truly commendable. A special acknowledgement to the organizing team for their meticulous planning and seamless execution. Your dedication has played a pivotal role in making this webinar a success. As we disperse, let's carry forward the knowledge gained today into our professional reams May the ideas exchanged here serve as catalysts for innovative approaches in integrating AI into our libraries. I'm sorry, I lost touch in between. Ah, uh, yeah, Prashant. Am I audible? Yes, Prashant, you are very much audible. I'm sorry, I lost touch in between. No, no, it, thank you so much, sir, for taking out time for this webinar. And uh, we'll be sharing the feedback link with our participants in this chat box through which uh, they can even scan this QR code to submit the feedback about this webinar and each certificate will be provided to each of the webinar participants once they fill up this feedback form. We'll also share the link uh, on our WhatsApp group also. Thank you all for your invaluable contribution to this webinar. Have a great day ahead. Thank you, sir. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste, namaste sir. Thank you all. Everybody, namaste. Prasanji, namaste. Salam, yeah, Madam. Namaste. Kulkarni, sir. Namaste. Jagdish ji, namaste. Okay. No, thank you, sir. Thank you all of you. Elib for you is one of the leading digital content aggregator, especially ebooks of various publishers around the world. elib for You platform is already live in various IITs, NITs, engineering colleges, and various esteemed universities across the country. elib for You provides access through various evolving models like pick and choose and subject packages for yearly or perpetual subscription. elib for You app is popular among students and academicians for e-textbooks, which can be used even in remote areas. You're most welcome to have a glimpse of our platform, taking the vision of Digital India forward and reaching out to the Gen Y. We strongly recommend our services.
New Age International Publishers. Established in 1966, is the market leader for school and university level textbooks. New Age has published more than 4,000 books in various subjects including science, engineering, management, agriculture. The books published by New Age are authored by eminent academicians of national and international repute and famous worldwide universities. New Age has its headquarters in New Delhi and branches in London and 10 metro cities across India. New Age is one of the evolving edtech companies which provides digital content through various platforms like eLib for you. New Age vision is to publish globally best quality content.